Clicking those cookies, clicking those cookies, clicking those cookies. Done. And that's the show, everybody. Jason got that those is... golden cookies. We're I only got one. It. Don't pretend you don't know how this works. You get one golden cookie, and it increases your cookie production by seven times till it runs out. You know, on the one hand, Jason, I am disappointed in you that you are back into cookie clicker. I really thought we'd all learned that lesson together. On the other hand, when you brought it up, I did look on my computer to see if I had the save file so I could uh, reload the game I had going back then. The it's episode. a quality meme, so let's not pretend you guys don't love cookie click. <laughs> the title of this episode is Relapse, everybody. Let's go. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much true. <laughs> hey, man, look. Okay, I don't have to click the cookies. I have it set up so that the cookies click themselves, but I don't know, man. I'm not going to just... This is this podcast is about value. I'm not leaving value on the table by not clicking the cookie when I have my golden cookie frenzy. And How many people do you think listening don't even know about cookie clicker? Uh, hey man, if you haven't listened to every episode of this podcast, you're dead to they're me. They're all free. Yeah. They're all available online at brainstormbrewery.com or various podcasting. If you apps, haven't listened to all 320 like episodes. Cast. Hey man, what do you got to do? What like if you think this podcast is good enough to listen to, aren't all of them good enough to listen to? The real like, yeah, value. the financial information is going to be kind of dated. We're gonna have some weird picks of the week. <laughs> you know? The real value of Cookie Clicker is the income it brings to Jason's carpal tunnel doctors. And <laughs> all right, so for anyone who doesn't know, Cookie Clicker is just this absurd game that somehow we all fell down the rabbit hole of a few years ago. Game is a strong word. You're right. Actually, it is a strong word. You click the cookie to you just do. It and is then a you, you buy upgrades. Mash game. You buy upgrades to click the cookie for you, but sometimes you get a golden cookie and you get such a giant benefit that you have to click the cookie yourself. So I got so deep into the game, I unlocked every single achievement you could with the exception of the ones that took years to complete, right? Like that the was one- the start. That was the start of Corbin's milk addiction. He got the milk upgrade for the cookies, and it was over. <laughs> yeah, there right. is a milk upgrade. I don't know. You see, I think you're just pretending not to know. There is a milk upgrade. So, like, why are you pretending not to know cookie clicker shit? It's been. He's, I mean, it's been years, Jason, since we since we did that. Yeah, it's been, it's been years, a man. It's been it's been quite a while. But hey, this podcast has been going for quite a while. Thank you so much for sticking around. And uh, the date of this recording, not the date that you're listening to this. But the date of this recording is uh, thank a patron day or whatever Patreon contrived to like make themselves <laughs> <laughs> relevant. They they have they have so few engagements on social media. I did a thank the patrons thing and they retweeted it just because they're like, oh, someone tagged Patreon. That's funny. So, yeah, like they're they're thirsty for attention. So um, good for them. Patreon's patrons. a great tool. We have hundreds of patrons and that's stupid. Right? There are other <laughs> just actual unsubscribe. Magic. Just just yeah, you shouldn't. You're dumb. No, you're you're a moron to just keep being dumb and giving us like a dollar to be in our Discord server. Um it's dumb that we have a Please don't unsubscribe. Well. Please don't unsubscribe. What you- <laughs> <laughs> they they can't. They're it's like cookie clicker. You're they locked can't. in they're, forever. You're locked in. I, I will go, say you can go away for a while, but you'll come back. Just like magic, just like cookie clicker. Um <laughs> But it's so it's so such a low hassle. It's a, I'm never it's, going back to Cookie Clicker, man. It's a buck a month, which is twenty or twenty five cents an episode. We could do episodely, but we're just we're doing monthly. Um, so Jason, like I will go back to quarter League of an episode. Legends. You can have access to our Discord server, and that's where all those sick memes are. It's a good time in there. And then you know, up from there, there's more rewards at the higher tiers. But really, we're just interested in. Just uh, hey, give us a quarter when you listen to this episode if you have a good time. If I make you laugh once. I think that's worth 25 cents. So that's our Patreon pitch. It's not a tough one. Just today, instead of pitching hard for new patrons, we're going to thank the existing patrons, the hundreds of you that it's a mind blowing number. I I still don't understand why you guys like our <laughs> humble podcast about a children's card game. But if we made the game more affordable for you and you want to give some of that money back, we're not going to say no. You guys are the best. Um, Except for the few of you that the worst, you know who you are, but <laughs> the rest of you are pretty much the best. Well, that was so. pretty good. That was that was about as high as praise as I've ever heard Jason give. Some of some of the worst don't know that they're the worst, and that's why they're the worst. That's why they're the worst. Yeah, I, I will say mm, on that note, we we have more patrons today uh, than we've ever had in the past. We we picked up a new a couple new people this week, so thank you to them. Um, it's pretty cool. We're getting closer to that level where we. 
commit to throwing a BSB party next year. We still don't know exactly what you know my work schedule is next year, what DJ's work schedule is. So, and we're am, we have not reached well, the goal yet. So we we're, we haven't you know officially picked a date and started booking a venue. But is it seventeen really fifty? Or we really want it to happen. It is seventeen fifty. Yeah, we really seventeen fifty. Also, Corbin's demonstrating how squeaky his chair is at the seventeen hundred and fifty dollars per month level. We're gonna burn that squeaky chair and give it a Viking funeral. That's true. Which is better than it deserves. <laughs> Uh, it's going to get a, an Oklahoma funeral where it just gets covered in kerosene and lit on fire. Well, um, isn't, I mean, that speaking, a Cali- isn't that a California funeral? No. <laughs> what? Speaking of value, this what shit. What are you even oh referencing? Oh, my God. That was so messed no, up. No, they didn't. That was, that, was, that was a campfire, DJ. <laughs> DJ. <laughs> Corbin's going to s- start not raking his leaves right now so that oh my we'll have gosh. a fire to throw the chair in. It took it's, me a minute to realize yeah, that took you a second. What no, it's like I wouldn't even want to acknowledge it because it didn't even make sense. It was just, that was just wedged in there, contrived. Oh, That's my too bad, DJ. gosh. Come Corbin on, dude. Oh, you're proud of him, Corbin. You're proud of him. Man. Whatever. It's messed up. <laughs> this chair was free. Speaking of value, Marianne got me this chair for free from work when they were throwing it out several weeks. Year, like five years ago. Hashtag also, you're saying you overpaid for it is what you're saying. I have a question. I have a question. So uh, four point five billion cookies. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so you you mentioned about life being about value, blah blah blah. I agree that things are about value, and I make a lot of decisions based on what the highest CV play is. So, uh, I was at the GP slash Pro Tour in Atlanta a few weeks ago, and we went to a basketball game. We went to an NBA game there. And um, the people I was with took the escalator, and I took the stairs going up. And they were like, Corbin, why would you do that? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, that thing where, like, you walk upstairs instead of taking escalators or elevators, and it just, like, does infinite for your, you know, whatever, your fitness level or your whatever, right? And I was like, yeah, just, you know, it's just, like, a thing I try sometimes to do. Isn't the better EV to walk up the escalators so that you get both? Well, I don't know. They, they said they were just so shocked. They're like, this seems... Contrary. Down escalator. That's how you get both. They said this seems contrary to everything you've ever done in your life. Just your entire ethos of of trying to get the highest EV out of everything. I mean, they're literally going to walk you up this distance you have to travel. Why wouldn't you do this? And I said, well, but there's also the health value gained out of doing something that I don't have to make an effort to go do it. I don't have to go work out or have to go do whatever. It's just here in front of me. So I do it. And that's like that's value. So I just I was just curious what what you guys think the right answer there is. Which is the higher EV play? I think the higher EV play is to walk up the escalator so that you get there faster while also getting the cardio in. Yeah, it's the not much EV cardio though, to be to, honest. Um, and you, nobody also like other people are on escalators, man. They're standing in front of you. I'm controlling my blood pressure with medication rather than the small <laughs> amount of exercise I would need to do. So I can actually take a pill that means I don't have to take care of myself. So like that's perfect. That's you're right. Jason. He gave me the smallest possible pill. He's like, your blood pressure is a tiny little bit high. Could be because you're in a doctor's office and everyone's blood pressure measures high in the doctor's office. Let me give you like five milligrams of this pill. And I was like, all right. He's like, or you could exercise five minutes a day. And I was like, <laughs> give me the pill. But the pill costs you money. So you got to take that into the EV calculation here. Yeah. My, I mean, my blood true, pressure but... was very high last time I went in. And they were like, have you done anything? This is very... And I was like, well, I chugged a Red Bull as I walked into here. Was that a bad idea? <laughs> and they were like, you're stupid. <laughs> yes, that was a bad idea. I, I believe like, oh, you did that. Yeah. 100%. Well, have I told you guys what that was? Did I tell you about when I went to try to be a... I tried to go get studied in a clinical study? I told you about that, right? It was a sleep study. Or, no, no, right. no. It was like a, no, it was, sleep studies to, I, to get I did fitted that. with a CPAP. I did. I've done one of those too. But no, it was like some like, you know, clinical testing company. Oh, yeah. You wanted to like get yeah, money st- or whatever. Stage yeah, yeah, four yeah. testing on humans. <laughs> yeah. 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 Something like that. I still actually have that gift card inside. I should. Uh, I should spin that. I should take that's the, the value that's I the got. Real me. EV. Some that's of those, the- some of those studies, the the ones that are like, hey, we got to collect your poop for like every twenty four hours. Like those pay a lot of money. Yeah, man. Like sometimes it's like you got to stay here for three weeks, and we'll give you like two grand. Yeah, like I would definitely be into that. But this was very simple. This was just come in, um, get your blood taken like three times. We'll give you this vaccine if you whatever. And then it turned out I already had the vaccine, so it didn't matter anyways. But I still got a hundred dollars for going in, so. But I should go spend that $100 is what I'm saying. I would saying. love to be in a control group. 
Mm-hmm. Where just nothing happens and you still get paid. Yeah, you yeah. Get, you take a placebo and then somebody else gets like. Well, I could have been like in this case they were then, yeah. they were just like it was just like a new version of a vaccine that already existed, like a small tweak on it, you know. So well, there's not going to be negative effects. Anyway. You could still get fucked up from the placebo, even if you know it's a placebo. That's the, that's like the weird thing, right? That is, no, that is true. I don't know about you, messed there up. There aren't but. a ton of negative benefits from placebo effect, but there are positive benefits for the placebo effect. So why don't we all just take placebos all the time then? <laughs> Because it's the, like a headache I think will go placebo, away, but you're not gonna like not have AIDS because you take a, I, a placebo. I don't know yet. We haven't tried it. DJ, I think like, the placebo in this. Like, I think the placebo is me walking up the stairs. I think taking one flight of stairs every few days probably does so little for my overall health. But no, it's an but it's excuse just to not. It's an excuse not to do more. So I it think, ups your mental game. Yeah, you're I, like I did yeah. something. So you're, well, this is the interesting thing. You guys know about Amazon Smile. Do you guys so know what that one, is? Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. And so actually, uh, it's, no, 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 it's no, no, no. Hang, hang oh, on. Oh, that's that, that's on. when you get caught by uh, an African villager and they like cut your neck and pull the tongue out the hole. It's called the Amazon smile, right? That was dark. No, it's man. a Colombian necktie. Never mind. What? You go, tell me what your thing is. Hang DJ, on. go ahead. Jesus Christ. Okay, if you do know what Amazon Smile is, uh, I highly recommend donating to Gamers Helping Gamers as your charity of choice. Use their. Uh, affiliate link or whatever you want to call it jj is going to put it in the show notes uh gamers helping gamers is a charity for magic players uh make scholarship funds for them i am one of the initial recipients of it gamers helping gamers helping go to college it gamers is gamers uh, helping gamers has got to be super embarrassed by it. like what happens to the first guy i want oh he dropped out of school and now he's on a magic podcast motherfucker <laughs> i i finished my undergrad man that's that's all <laughs> that's that's I didn't they, use they a degree paid. at all. Thank you, John Finkel. Yeah. <laughs> so, if for those of you who don't know, Amazon Smile is just this thing where Amazon will give like ten. They, I, I don't. It's not even one percent. I don't think it's something very. It might be one percent. It's it's a very small amount of your purchase. They will donate to charity. It doesn't change the cost to you. You just go to smile.amazon.com. I think it is, and uh, they'll donate it to, to charity. But I saw a study that this actually was worse for charities because people use Amazon Smile and they say, well, I'm doing it. I'm doing charitable giving. I did it. But at the end of the year, they've given tens of dollars or whatever, right? And those same type of people who are motivated enough to use Amazon Smile to donate are the same type of people who would typically donate to a charity. But because they tell themselves they've been doing it all year long, they don't give a charity any money. But at the end of the year, they've given less money than they would have otherwise. Right. But they so, feel like they did as yeah. correct. Speaking of placebo, you know it's like it's, act, it's actually Smile, bad for charities. Amazon Smile would be Bezos paying his employees a livable wage so they don't have to piss in a plastic yeah. water bottle. Yeah, plus the whole thing is like, I, I don't know anyways, because I tried it once to give to um, the Central Oklahoma Humane Society for, you know, anyone listening from Oklahoma, it's great. My wife used to work there. They rescue animals. Um, it's a, you know, no kill policies, et cetera. It's, it's great, right? So I tried to give to them through Amazon Smile and I was able to just basically type it in and then, but there was no confirmation. There's no, oh, this is a real charity. Like, I have a feeling- You just have to hope like, the link worked, kind of like our Squatty Potty thing. It wasn't even like a, yeah, it wasn't even like a link. It was just like, you just type in the name. And like one thing, it's like, I hope Amazon got them the money, but my wife worked in the marketing department and the whole company was only like 10 people and like, they never heard anything about it. So I have a feeling that some of the, I, I just, we're talking about placebos. I think there might be a lot of it going on. Or you that. just put like backslash instead of forward slash and the money went to like some other complete place. Right. Which means it, well, it probably went to Amazon, <laughs> which to be fair, you know, that doesn't cost Amazon. Like it doesn't cost me anything, but. Yeah, interesting. Anyway. Yeah, did you think this podcast was going to start with us uh, talking about giving money to charity? I mean, last week we talked about muscular dystrophy. That's true. That's true. Like That's our thing now. We're, we're a charitable podcast. Use we those should. breaking bulk profits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whether it's... Uh... You know, the Muscular Dystrophy Association or our Patreon. Just give to somebody who's less fortunate. <laughs> you got it, man. All right. Let's do some breaking bulk before we move on. We got a lot of emails playing this week. We've got some normal stuff. We're starting to get UMA spoilers. We're going to touch on that a little bit. No, not too not. much. <laughs> not too much since uh, no, we're not. by the time you listen to this episode, the whole set, I think, will be previewed. But uh, let's do breaking bulk. Breaking bulk time. 
Breaking bulk time. Break, break, break. Oh, yeah, breaking bulk. There's so much good stuff. It's a pick. Breaking bulk. The end. Mercadian masks, uncommon with zero reprints. No one knows the answer. What color to this. is it? It doesn't have one. It doesn't have a color, so is it land? I'm not. No, no, no more pixies. <laughs> well, there's the there's a cycle of five lands that are like charge counter lands. It is not Mercadian masks. It is not the charge counter lands. It's not Surprisian scary. Sk- no, no, Surprisian scary wasn't the charge counter lands. Surprisian scary is the one that comes in with two counters, and you can yeah. take a counter off to add two are, color, two mana, well, are, color, two mana pool. Are those not right? charge counters too? That's a com- I, don't, I don't know. There's don't a, know what there's, the a pl- there's a there's there's a cyclic common that has two counters, and you can tap it to remove a counter and get two mana. There's a cycle at uncommon that is like charge counters that you well, like pay to put. It's not either of those. So, so it's not a go. land. Cur- I. It's not a land, sure. It's not a land. It's an uncommon... It's an uncommon creature with no reprints. And, uh, it's Mercadian Masks. It is... Composite Golem? Worth $2 TCG average. It's not whatever you just said. It's not Composite Golem. No, it's not Composite Golem. I don't think that card was Masks, was it? It might not have been. I think it was Invasion. Yeah, I think you're right. But know, uh, yeah. Composite Golem is not $2 either, so this card is uh, $2 because of a recent multicolor dragon from M19. Uh, so it's... Oh, from M19? Oh, so it's a wall. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the wall in masks? Oh, wow, I definitely don't know what the walls in masks are. I looked up what the answer no, is let me here, think. So, but good luck, Jason. It's not barbed wire. That's not a wall. Wow, this is ridiculous, DJ. I'm really good at this. Thank you. Well, uh, okay, uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I could. I played a ton of this set. Mercadian uh, masks, or what's the flavor text? Mercadian soldiers excel at finding things to stand behind. It's a zero related. Yeah, yep, 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 you got it. Crenellated wall, you got it. Yeah, nice. All right, so Crenellated uh, Wall is a four mana 0 4 wall. Tap, target creature gets plus zero, plus four until end of turn. You mean target creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn? This is really oh! stupid chromey. What, uh, Arcades? Yes. Wow. Yep. What a random, random Wally boy. spike, man. I well, mean, it, if by random you mean completely dude, predicated on Dude, if Wall of Kelp it, can go up to $9, I think <laughs> Crenellated Wall can go up a little. Yeah, it's just wild. You just can't so, I knew, I, I knew I'd get deck. it if you gave me enough hints. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this can't possibly and I'm bad be at, good. This I'm is a card that was obviously worth literally zero dollars prior to M19. It is now worth two, so they are, are in bulk. You can find them. It's it not is like heading junk back down went too. way up. Like if oh, you really look, heading back down. But... This thing's this thing's gonna be waste useless again in six months. But you should yeah, sell well, what's now. card? Yeah, Card Kingdom could be paying real money for I'm it. I'm sure. So. I'm sure somebody is. Yeah. What a what a this this card is so bad. I would just laugh somebody out of the group if they played this against me. Well, like it's. I guess if they were playing Arcades, specific thing. If they're playing Arcades, you'd be like, "Oh, that's kind of cool." And then I would just be like, "But really, you have to. There has to be something better than this." Yeah, good pick, DJ. It turns Arcades into a three-turn kill because it has uh, seven commander damage now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've got one. I've got a, an M12 uncommon for you guys. Or wait, no, it doesn't because he's not a defender. Never mind. It's bad. I don't know. Yeah, it's very bad. But currently, whatever. It's very bad. Uh, Pick I've got an M12 uncommon for you guys. What color is it? It is colorless. From M12. Elixir of Immortality. No. Is it uh, the the land that brings back an artifact? It is. This card's been reprinted yep. a bunch. Buried What's it called? Ruin. Buried, buried Ruin. Buried Ruin, yeah. So yeah. Buried Ruin was in M12. It was in Commander 2014, 2016, 2018, Commander Anthology Volume 2. It's a lot of printings, and yet this card is still a dollar. And, and the yeah, reason... Corbin has also picked it already on the spreadsheet. How long ago? Like over a year ago, but that's okay, still irrelevant. That's, it's not irrelevant, man. <laughs> I think you've you recycled. Think our, you have recycled our, articles in a shorter time span than I have recycled break, breaking bulk picks. 
But my articles aren't what people pay for on the Breaking Bulk spreadsheet. <laughs> okay. People pay for this information, dude. You can't be duping up. You can't Some be people dipping. listen to the podcast and might have started listening in the past year and a half. All right. I got one. Buried Ruin is up because, in large part because of the KCI deck in Modern, but it's also just, in general, good cards. So, yep, pick them out. Yeah, I mean, Buried, Buried Ruin is going to be in another commander set in the next two years yep. also yep mm-hmm. but it's just one of those cards that just like it's just never it's always worthless. worth buy listing yeah, yeah it's just it's, even right now they're actually a dollar or more you know that's even nuts. if it gets reprinted again they'll still be 50 cents they'll still be breaking bulk you know like just grab them all yeah just grab yep, never yep, yep. never don't pick this uh here's a card that made me literally say what because it's in a cycle and it's more than all the other ones in a cycle mirage land what set? What set? Mirage. Every land in the cycle is a pick, but this one is absurd. And I was just—I uh, always—I—I I just pick every non-basic and set them aside, and then I go through them later. So, like, I pick every non-basic. Guy, so there's never a chance of me missing this. But I pooped my pants when I saw how much more this was worth. I don't even. It's think... ten times more than the cheapest one in the cycle. Wow, I don't even know if I know. Okay, so the cycle, the cycle are like the bad fetches, right? Oh, the slow fetches. Yes. Oh, is it Uh, it bad river? The floodplain, grasslands, it's the red black uh, mountain valley, rocky tar pit. But bad river is almost three bucks on uh, Card Kingdom. It's nearly the same amount on TCG. My gosh, I actually got that one. Go me. It's it's the blue black one. It's the the blue black one. Yeah, it's It's a a blue black one. Bad river is blue. Get wrecked, DJ. Yep, so for whatever reason, this is almost three bucks on TCG Player and uh, Card Kingdom. Uh, EDH Rec has both prices now, so thank God for yeah, that. This is so actually, I have to I, I've looked look it up. Look up TCG Player just for, so you guys don't give me shit for looking <laughs> up Card Kingdom. No, this is actually the fourth most expensive uncommon in the set, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's nuts. Because I was just pulling all these, and I was like, yeah, Rocky Tar Pit, that's worth buy listing. Yeah. You're buying it for like a nickel. Mountain Valley, oh, that's twice as much as Rocky Tar Pit. That's weird. And then you look at Bad River, it's like, oh, shit. Do you think it's just a... I think it's it's good enough for EDH. Yeah, um, well, it definitely is. I mean, do you think... So... I'm trying to figure out why this one's worth more. Do you think there's just... Do you think it's because Polluted Delta has always been expensive, maybe more well, I mean, so than other? You mean like I mean, on or... principle? I don't really know. I, don't I can really tell know. you that Mountain Valley or whatever the red-green one is has a commander printing, so... Um, yeah, well, Rocky Tar Pit has a dual deck printing. Um, so maybe it's just has the a only, dual deck printing. Oh, it's just the only one that hasn't been reprinted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be. That's interesting. I was going to say, I know the red green one is in a commander deck. I knew the blue white one was in a dual deck. Uh, so, yeah, it's probably just the one without a reprint. For the record, well, gra- while, while Grassland. We're... Oh, yeah, Grasslands was in uh, Commander 2017 yeah, and dual deck, sense. Knights vs. Dragons. So, yep, yep, yep. Bad, bad River definitely on the. Uh, the short list but, I mean, to be reprinted. I'm all sure. of them are all of them are buy listable. They're all picks. So just yeah, just never don't pick a non basic basically. Because yeah. even like Car Kingdom was paying like seven cents on the uh, the cons comes into play tap lands. <laughs> the game and you got a whole life. big you, yeah you got a whole big stack of those and all of a sudden it's like oh that's seventy bucks in those that's crazy. So like you know the. Just don't ever bulk out a, an on basic land. Yeah. Basically, While we're keep on, your deserts, keep all that crap. Just set it aside. Don't bulk it, and then you know just wait. I I leave a lot of non basics in there that are not buy listable for a significant margin because when I sell my true bulk on Facebook and Craigslist, I want people to have non basic lands to build with, and I don't want them to think that I just picked everything. I mean that's that's, that's fair, but sure like they if come you, back. Sure. If so you, like. It, if you don't know the price of everything, I would I overpick. Well, I don't as much anymore, but when I like had to look more stuff up than I do now, I would tend to overpick. Yeah, and, overpicking uh, is fine. Overpicking is fine even when you know the if stuff. If you want to, if you want to seed, changes and you're never if you don't yeah. look if you don't you're never gonna know unless you overpick and check stuff. Even if you checked it six months before, like stuff happens all the time in this market. There's thousands and thousands of cards. But you can't keep track of them all. Even when you're as deep into it as us, you're going to miss stuff moving. So I overpick as well. Now, even so that, even what, if D- no, what DJ said is true, though. So I tend to go, but I find the worthless stuff. And instead of just keeping it or bulking it, I will seed my instant collections with it. Even if you're as deep into this as Corbin, who doesn't know cards before Shards of Alara. Ooh. Even if you're that deep. 
Mercadian Mask. Who even played in Mercadian Masks? I just don't know. DJ just doesn't. It's so much uh, that it's. I know the picks by the pictures for the older stuff. So when I'm picking stuff, I pick it fine. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna say I'm as good at picking Mirage as I am at picking, you know, something from three years ago or five years ago or eight years ago or whatever. But I know them. It's, I just can't. I just don't. I didn't play then. And I'm not as deep into this as DJ, so I can't just pull those card names up like Jason well, can. Well, I'm pretty damn good at picking Mirage, and I still poop my pants when I saw how much Bad River was. Yeah. So, also, like, I'll, this I'll stuff throw, can still surprise you. I'll throw this out on Mirage while we're there. Um, a handful of the basic lands are actually worth real money as well. Um, oh, yeah. The, the There's a swamp that's a dollar. There's an island that's more than a dollar. There's a mountain that's a dollar. The lightning plains, yeah. Yeah, and then there's a handful of them. I mean, basically, the majority of them are at least 50 cents or 75 cents. So, you know, pick your Mirage Basic Lands and Odyssey maybe, too. yeah, and maybe there's, there's, there's I mean, uh, we could do an entire segment on Basic Lands worth money, but it's, it's really like, hard to know unless you just memorize them. Yeah, it's like Odyssey Forest. And sometimes Forest. the foils are worth like 100 times what you'd think. Yeah. It's like Odyssey Forest 249, I think, or something like that. Whatever the green autumn one is that kind of looks like a Dryad Arbor uh, FGV, that Odyssey Forest is worth a dollar. Yeah, and obviously there's some of the given ones, right? Like Lorwyn, I think, is the one that's most often cited where you have the glimpse of the, the island or swamps that have the purple on them because you're seeing... Yeah, that was my favorite breaking bulk ever. I would love a forest that looked like a Dryad Arbor but, FTV but just so I could too. try to sack it to natural order. There was a Shards of Alara or Alara Reborn. I'm not sure which one it was. Um, it's, there the was chippy, just, it's the Chippy Island. Yeah, it's just... Uh, I'm thinking of the Swamp. The Chippy Swamp, the Chippy... There's Esper yeah. Cycle. I did that as a breaking bulk and you guys gave me shit for it. Yeah, because it was dumb. Well, it, it's, it was a dumb breaking bulk, you idiot. I, I don't know. I'm just saying it's 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 pretty cool. They actually reprinted that art in M19, that yeah. island or swamp. And it's it good the for the purposes reprinted. of knowing to pick it. It's bad for the purposes of a guessing game. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> you dick. Uh, anyways, all right. Let's uh, let's move on. Well, the the just the update is that we're starting to see the spoilers come out now. Obviously, we'll have a lot of them. By the time you listen, but the EV seems to be The update is it's so. Friday and the set's fully spoiled, Corbin. That's the update for them. All right, well, here's some relevant information based on what you guys have seen so far. Do you think that people should be trying to jump on these $250 boxes, or do you think that they're going to disappear? If I don't get to do the intro into that, that's the question. Do you think that people should be jumping on boxes now, or do you think they're going to be able to get them cheaper a month from now? Oh, <sighs> cheaper. Jeez. Wow, um, I asked the question that, wow, relevant. Oh, man. But what do you yeah, guys well, think? You, you introduced it all lame, man. An intro matters. Uh, I don't know. DJ's not saying anything either. We don't know. <laughs> uh, the box toppers are unprecedented, so it's it's a well, little tough to the, say. The, the tweet I saw as of you know Monday when we were recording was that the EV had only gone up. Now, obviously, they're going to front load it with the best stuff, um, but it sure seems like the EV... Heading towards release, it's just going to be higher than anyone even gave it credit for. I think. Um, oh yeah, they, well, there's everyone's just 50, like, oh, they, they rares. spoiled all the good stuff, and then just today on Monday we saw Back to Basics spoiled yeah. at non mythic. Yeah, so. we're seeing yeah, and Phyrexian Tower and stuff like these yeah. are fifty, sixty dollar rares that there's going to be for, in this set. And then obviously, we're gonna alter drop. finally, yeah, finally, yeah. Exactly. I don't like I don't like questions like that. <laughs> Okay. I'm, no, I'm, I'm I'm actually serious because like whenever somebody asks me if they should buy a box, the answer is just always going to be the same, and it's like, do you like gambling? Are you like if you're trying to make money? No, don't buy a box. Well, if I'm not asking people like, or if they're. I'm not asking if you think people are going to make money on a box. I'm asking if you, if somebody's listening at home and just wants to know, hey, this looks pretty cool. Should I buy a box? If now, you think it looks like, cool, buy a box. The, the question is, master sets always seem to be more later. Yeah, if you go to your LGS, that's, 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 that's not true yeah. for the past two. Right. Well, it's a very simple question. Based on what you've seen, do you think that people should be trying to snap up 250, 260, 270? I don't know. Do you like now? to gamble? Because he doesn't he doesn't want to be gotcha. He doesn't want to be nailed down on. Well, that's it, fine. Then say that. The set's unprecedented. I don't think the boxes will be more, worth more later. Okay. Well, like how later? Two or three months. Yeah, that's a very yeah, simple the, answer to a very. You think simple they'll be question. worth the same in two to three months? Yeah. Okay. It's going to depend on a, how much they print, I guess. But from the this LGS, is a super, pers- this is a 
this is a product that's going to be very, very competitive and very fought over for the people who are willing to buy it. So everybody's going to have to compete and fight each other for to make even the smallest dollar on it. If vendor cost is two hundred and people are selling for two two twenty five, two fifty, whatever, everybody's going to be trying to um, race to the bottom. Yeah, I mean, so, vendor vendor cost is uh, at least for us is one eighty five, um, and I was told that it's very that they're going to do a run of it. And they're going to give out what they can give out, and that's going to be it. Um, and I, I would suspect the Wizards said that. So I think I would say, you know, if you can get a Black Friday deal to get these, if you decide that you want to buy a box, I think you're better off just doing it on Black Friday, which should be when you're listening to this podcast um, or tomorrow if you are a patron. You what about Small early. Business wait, Saturday? Wait, that's so the answer was if you want to buy a box, you should buy a box? My answer is if you want to buy a box, you should buy a box now rather than I don't think this is going to be sitting on shelves the way Eternal Ma- or the way Iconic and Masters 25 were with people f- trying to fire sell them two months from now. OK, I don't think the boxes are worth more later. OK, I guess I guess we'll see. It should it should definitely be interesting to see how it plays out, because it is certainly unprecedented with the amount of value they're stuffing into this, including at the rare slot. And these are a lot of these. Some of these, of course, are scarcity based reprints, but a lot of these are just these are demand based reprints. So it's going to I think it's going to rebound very quickly. All right. Hit us up with some emails. Patreon email forty dollars from Anderson Leclerc at Yahoo.com. This we don't have to read this. This one's for Jason. This one's oh, for we Jason. should read it. We should read it. Uh, fuck, marry, or kill DJ Corbin or the guest you have on at the time of reading this. Sent from Bofa. We don't have a guest. Uh, I know. Besides DJ. Fuck DJ. Kill Corbin. Um. Marry. Don't enter a bigamous relationship. <laughs> marry nobody, die alone. Marry nobody. <laughs> die alone. But I'm married already. <laughs> Like my wife's not gonna be mad if I fuck DJ because she's like, oh, that's not, he's not a threat to me. <laughs> like I don't, I'm not worried. Like if I told her it's just like a one time thing on a dare, she'd be like, all right, <laughs> like that's not a. But if I marry somebody else, she's gonna be so mad. She's gonna take away half our money. Wow, which is all of my money. Yeah, it is so, all of your money. That's true. So um, I know no. I, I read that one because I know Andy wanted me to read it when we had a guest. And he wanted to be the guest because he wants to know if I want to fuck him or marry him. That would be so awkward um, if we had it. Imagine if we had like Gavin on and you read that email. I can't marry Andy because we would have two pairs of Guy Fieri Crocs and we would get him confused. <laughs> I'm like, I'll spoon with the dude, but I don't want to accidentally put my feet in his Crocs. So sorry, dude, we can't get married. All right, I saved this other email to cheer me up for when I was annoyed at Corbin for making a stupid question. I don't think I've ever asked a stupid question in my life. Go on. This one is my happy place email because we got it like three weeks ago and I was like, this email is great because it is the next Sander. We found the next Sander. Oh, no. (laughs) Sander gets eaten up by Warcraft and there's just a line to replace him. Let's hear it. Uh, The title of this email is Hoy from Poland. From Jan Nowak, I think. Oh is the name. no, it's a Polish guy. He's gonna kill me. Hello, my brand. My, hello, my brandstorm brew people. I I have name Jan Nowak. I am from Poland and play magic. I have just recently started to hear your podcast. It is large. <laughs> it is large with humors and magic. It has helped me with learning my English for school. <laughs> but quote fuck quote Jason. not marry or kill not marry or kill Poland is not Mexico we have no (laughs) I said you were Europe's Mexico come on we have no drug kings ruling our state we have no caravans of people running away we are a great state many beautiful people and places come visit us and see how great we are also how long has Corbin been a cow farm (laughs) (laughs) He must buy American Cowboy with Milkman. B-Y. B-Y. Buy spelled B-Y. He must buy American Cowboy with Milkman. True American seasonings of the ground. Period. 
DJ, don't worry, I will Patreon once I find a way to convert some of my Zlati into some Pesoa Mexican monies. Ciao, Jan Noak. The caravan is not even from Mexico. Come on. Get Come your on, geopolitical Jan. references correct. It's true, there's no... <sighs> Whatever, man. Thanks for writing in. Thanks for being a good sport about me calling your country Europe's Mexico. <laughs> Wow, you really got called out on that one, Jason. That's a good I? I think the odds were in your favor there to not have that happen to you, and then it happened anyways. <laughs> that was a good email. It made, my, it made me happy. Next email. Next email is from Juan Rodriguez, and it says, read me. Read um, me. Stop comparing. I, I'm Juan Rodriguez from Mexico. Stop comparing us to <laughs> Poland. <laughs> <laughs> we're not a garbage failed state with the lowest GDP in Europe. Get it right. <laughs> Wow, I, that comparison cuts both ways. Sorry, Juan. Wow. Uh, this email was sent October 29th. What up, Brew Crew and DJ? I made a poor decision a few GP Vegas ago, and I call upon y'all to help me figure out how to right my past wrongs. I got caught up in all the hype of the artists attending and got some cards signed that I now know and wish I hadn't. Some of it I don't <laughs> mind and care about, and I just play it in Commander, my Nylia, my Dragonlord Jermoka, etc. But the one I kick myself over is Liliana's of the Veil. Pause for Jason to laugh at me for being a stupid idiot. What, for getting it signed by Steve Argyle? I don't know, man. I wish I could post yeah. them on TCG Player with pictures. As of right now, there's three listed, and they appear to command a 10 to $15 premium. The one guy asking $200 is on some good good, I guess. Am I going to have some much luck listing them at around the same price as an unsigned copy? What do you guys typically do when you run across signed cards? How come signed duels don't seem to take much of any of a hit for being signed? Answer whenever. I'll keep playing with the Liliana in the meantime. Keep up with the great content and Corbin stay milky. Set for my Pokedex. Ooh, I like that. I, some some signed cards it just tanks them, but like some people don't care. Some people consider it a minor upgrade. Some people are like that's damaged. I think now that TCG Player allows you to post pictures, people are like, well, I don't have a way to. Before it's like you, this card's written on it's damaged. We don't have a way to classify it. You can email now with them. the pictures. You can yeah, you you bam. I I know a lot of when I first started finding signed stuff, I liked it more. I would give people a premium for a signed card. So there there are people out there that like it more. Signed duels don't take much of a hit because people are just buying a duel land. You know, they're just like I, I need duels. There aren't enough for people yeah, to be just, that picky. They can't be picky. Signed duels are still damaged, uh specifically as as a rule for signed cards, if you try to bring them to me as a vendor, I will pass. Um, right. they are just awkward. They are too awkward to list on TCG it's just player. Too hard to sell, man. The process it takes too long. Um, but there is a niche market for signed cards, and it is a skill set to learn which artists just scribble their name on everything and which artists are hard to find. So Steve Argo is somebody who there are probably more signed lilies in the world than, than not. unsigned. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's an exaggeration, obviously, but Steve Argyle just signs a lot of the Leon of the Bales. So well, he goes to a lot of GPs. It's more the people that don't really go right. to GPs. Right. And yeah. so you can, like, I see RK post more than my mom. So, like, signed cards by him don't really <laughs> command a premium. Uh, that's this Rob is all, this all correct. Rob Alexander has signed more duels than not. There's just a lot of artists where you're like, oh, that's signed. It is just. Uh, the Eric Deschamps, Noah Bradley, these are signatures that are just very common. Mark Teton, he's been to a lot of GPs recently. You just get those. Then you find the signatures that are uncommon. Uh, Christopher Rush is the most obvious example because he passed away a couple years ago. But, like, signed cards by him are a minimum of $20. It could be a brainstorm. It could be a lightning bolt. A Rush, a rush signature is at minimum $20. It, com it goes up for higher-end cards like lightning bolts. I sold a play set of unlimited bolts recently for, like, $230. Um, that's just because that card is very iconic. Rush Signed Lotus is obviously a command and premium. And then you get into the more obscure artists where you've just never seen that card before. Like, I know uh, Bloodgast and Birthing Pod signatures generally command a premium because they're signed by somebody whose tagline is Darken. And nobody really knows who that guy is, to my knowledge. He's just, like, some dude 
uh, who did magic cards. He doesn't really have a website to my knowledge and signed cards. Like, it's just hard to find him to contact him to get those cards signed if you like him. Uh, so I know signed blood gas, I think command and premium. You, you have to get into a very specific market of finding obscure signed cards. I know this doesn't necessarily answer your email because you have signed cards from people at GPs. That generally means that they will be worth less uh, or generally the same amount. Uh, but if you do want to get into well, the Well, he's sign- saying the lilies are at a bit of a premium, so I think on, you can well, probably get... I think people on TCG are asking a premium without knowing that the signed lilies are not worth a premium. So the ones that are close to or below listed price are gone, and the ones that are above are the ones still left, is what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, I think uh, I think if you take a bit of a hit, um, you should they'll, they'll move. Someone's not going to care about signature, or someone's going to be down with it. Yeah, I mean, you could also just put them in your trade binder. You're like, hey, five dollars less for the signature, and then you trade it to somebody who's like, wow, that's signed, that's cool. I'm um, somebody who was like you were a few years ago. So, yeah. thanks for the email. I mean, I think I'm talking ten years ago, but okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean, he said he made a poor decision a few years ago. Oh, well, getting a card signed means. It's like getting you're getting an autograph. It means yeah. more to you. You're keeping a piece of memorabilia. Like, like I have, uh, I have a set of Ravnica foil life from Lums that are signed by Therese that I'll keep forever because that's one of my favorite cards. And that signature probably doesn't command a premium in the long run because Therese is easy to contact through mail. But, um, yeah. Also, there are. I mean, this is a morbid turn on this, but there are specific artists. If you are looking to get cards signed by them, that you should contact sooner than later if they have done a lot of old school cards. I know artists like Mark Teton and Dan Fraser have been in the game for twenty five years, and so the cards that they have signed um could theoretically command a premium if those artists pass away, similar to like what happened with Rush. I am I am trying to get some uh, swamp signed by Dan Frazier in the upcoming months, just because like he's got Dan Frazier in his death pool. That's what he's saying. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> right? Like pick an artist, bet on them being the next to croak, and well, uh, I'll you know, load up. Those are swamps that I'm playing in Ganti, but um, yeah, it, you can sort of. Get into the artist market. There are Facebook groups. You you can learn what signatures are hard to find, which ones aren't, um, and just play it by ear. A lot of artists are just very easy to contact by mail nowadays. Uh, it's just a little yeah. way for them to make some extra money on the side. Send them a friendly email and ask like a few probing questions about their health. Nothing. It's like, hey, how are you feeling health wise? Good. And they're like, well, my back hurts, or uh, gotta go to the doctor for some tests. Then you just buy all the cards you can. You just. Don't make it obvious what you're asking. Just pretend to be concerned about their well-being. Right, DJ? (laughs) Next email is from Benjamin Whalen. Hey, man, I'm the bad person. I'm not the one betting Dan Teton's going to die soon. Yes. Mark Teton. That was pretty messed up for you to say. Dan Frazier. That was pretty messed up for you to say, DJ. This email is about asking a live podcast. Hey guys, I've been listening to the podcast for a while, but I got busy and I had to catch up. I was listening to the number 309 Milk Fart episode, and you said to send more emails, so this is me sending an email. Have you guys ever li- considered doing a live listen-in during the podcast? Just having a couple people listening on Skype while you record. I don't know how annoying that would be for you guys to arrange, but it's, Very. An interesting, <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting idea. If you ever want to have additional guests on the podcast, I'm interested in doing it. You don't even have to pay me $40. Pay us. <laughs> We, we're going to have to open that Patreon tier up first for that to be a thing, but sure. Right now it's capped. The Patreon tier is capped at the moment. Um, Yeah. That well, is something we have considered doing it is, in the future. Yeah. It, it's logistically kind of difficult. It's also, sometimes we also talk about things that later we're like, eh, don't air. Um, or, you know, you know, kind of ruins some of the uh, the magic of the podcast if there's a lot of dead space it doesn't get cut out because we're waiting for someone else to say something or we're talking over each other or we decide to redo yeah, we're something. Yeah, we talk over each other a lot. It's just a big... I don't... Is that a thing we do on this podcast? And there's the no? dead space. Yeah, that was good. I'm glad we were all on the same page there. <laughs> Uh, but all anyway, right. so we have thought about it. If it's something people want, I think we, it's very possible it's a thing we might do as a Patreon reward uh, for patrons. So, um, you know, if you are a patron and that's something you're interested in, let us know because it certainly seems like it would be a good sort of bonus content. We've mentioned that we're revamping the Patreon uh, January 1st. There are going to be some 
um, rewards that are going to be only available to people that are already subscribed when we make the changes. So if you are on the fence, I would get subscribed now before January 1st. Yeah, to we've, have got, we've got in. a lot of cool changes coming. Yep. So make sure you get locked in before we make the changes because there will, will be stuff that's only for current patrons. Right. and then Nothing nothing yeah, will be so. worse, but we, we do want to switch it up a little bit yeah. just uh, – you know, we're just going to add stuff. We're not yeah. going to take anything away. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to change some stuff. <laughs> not take anything away, but maybe change what it is. So, you know, some things may be limited run if you want to look at it that way because you might not be able to get the same rewards six months from now that you get now. You might get something similar, but it will be, um, in some cases, different. All right. Hot takes on modern from oh, this in. person doesn't really have a tagline outside of JK. Uh, but hey, guys, enjoy the cast as always. What are your opinions on the state of modern? Do you feel like anything needs to be changed? If so, what? Thanks. And I hope to see some of you in Atlanta next weekend. So this email was sent before GP Atlanta. And I know Corbin's not going to be in any GPs uh, for the rest of this year. But I do want to give a shout out and just let everybody know that there is a standing offer through all 29 GPs. If you do go to a GP where Corbin is at and you manage to tip his drink over, I will give you $5 in DJ dollars and store credit with me. And if you manage to damage any electronics or uh, ruin his clothes in any way, that uh, dollar amount gets bumped up to 20 and you will be banned from all future GPs, which is a relief because well, they're going to be magic fests from now on. That depends. And no any part of that. I would say that depends on how how much I appreciate the game. That's that's what I would say as to whether or not I decide to ban you from the event, which I do have the power to do. So if uh, you destroy Watsy Electronics, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be up to you to ban. Them. Oh, of course not. But uh, I'm a contractor. All my electronics are my own, right? I, I'm not putting oh, my drink on top. Oh, we're destroying Corbin's of, personal property. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not putting Destroy my drink all of on his personal. Property. I'm not putting my drink on top of our TriCaster. You know, uh, but if I appreciate the game, I'll go along with it. If I think it was a good score, uh, but now I'm now I've got my guard up. I had forgot about this, but now but now I've uh, now it I'm is ready. a standing offer through all 2019 GPs. I'll be at most of those North American GPs, but if you just manage to, I don't care if you use projectiles. Um, I don't care if you. Uh, just tackle the table like anything that manages to <laughs> to ab- at least be clever the, about it. If you manage to achieve the objective, uh, I do not require physical proof. Uh, just Corbin will really? let me know. You hear if that, it everybody? Happens. He doesn't require proof. Walk up to him at his booth, tell him that you knocked my drink over. I'll lie for you. I don't get my drink knocked over. You steal money from DJ. Everyone wins. Well, now, now you require physical proof. Yeah, obviously, dumbass. Come on. Come on. I was hoping to let this go on the honor system. But Corbin ruined it. Yeah, I ruined it. No one could oh. have possibly thought to game that one. P.S. from our friend, I do feel Lord of Atlantis is a bit too strong for modern. Should be banned. Okay, I'm okay, sure Corbin fair. would agree. You guys love I've – got, I've got my modern rant down to, it, to about a 60, 90-second pitch, so you just tell me when. Uh, next email, Never. Will, and, Will right. and Rowan Planeswalkers Cellar Hold. This email should be pretty straightforward. Brew Crew, I recently opened the Will and Rowan Planeswalkers from a random pack of Battle Bond. Should I sell or hold them? I don't think they're likely to be reprinted, but I don't think they'll significantly increase in value. Also, Jason, what is your recommendation for a fall seasonal beer? Eric, sent from my Microsoft Surface while well, I should be paying attention to group presentations. Fall seasonal is time for stouts. You want something that's going to, you know, be served cold but go down warm. Uh, I like a big, heavy stout. I'm lucky I'm from Michigan. Uh, Founders Kentucky breakfast stout and Canadian breakfast stout are both uh, good ones. But uh, if you can't get those because those are pretty hard to get, where you are, you should be able to get Founders breakfast stout or something like that. Maybe Arcadia Serial Killer. Um, Bell's has some pretty good stouts. Like a lot of Michigan breweries have really good stouts. Uh, you know, the Midwest, they tend to, you know, have fall and winter in mind. Um, if you're looking for more of like a an apple picking type fall sort of a deal, um, I don't know, maybe uh, an M43 uh, if you can get that where you are or – Actually, cider's not bad. You basically can't go wrong with a hard cider because they're all pretty good. Not a cider fan. Well, 
You know, um, I, if I agree not, with you. A lot of people do not, like the, them. But... The less mass produced they are, the less likely they are to be like oversweet. Like, I'm right. not saying woodchuck. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. saying like a local hard cider. I'm with you. Yeah, my, especially my wife like likes the uh, the, the, the French thing. the French style that still has the you know the the bacteria the farmhouse funk on it. That's that's some good stuff. So I, I would I would go with a cider or a stout in the fall. And the uh, it's we're starting to get into winter now here in November. Right. And uh, you know it, I'm drinking a a real nice stout tonight. Um, and uh, so uh, yeah, that's that's probably my recommendation. I don't know where you are and what you can get, right. but the, um, you really can't go wrong with a nice. Uh, Local cider, or uh, I don't know, maybe a sour. But I, I, I drink different stuff than most people. But yeah. we're out of the summertime beer, so none of that, um, none of that's easy to drink stuff. You want something you got to really chew through. Yeah, and a lot of it, and this is probably applicable to wherever you live, unless you just live in a part of the country where it's not a thing. But find your local breweries and talk to them. Local brewers love to talk about their beers, and if you find a lot of them have tap rooms. And, you, you know, you probably have breweries in your town that you don't know about. Uh, and that sort of stuff, it can be, you know, you might like it, you might not. But you can go into a place like that and have sort of a, you know, a real conversation with people who can give you specific advices for the town in which you live. Because that's, a, you know, Jason and I could list off our favorite craft beers and all that. And I, I try to, I don't drink them, I think, as often as Jason. I usually just drink something, you know, I was drinking a Blue Moon tonight, something generic. Um Except for nights where I really want to have good beer. Um, but just getting to know your local beer scene can go a really long way. Uh, I'll take the magic half of it, too. Will and Rowan, I sell assume... Them. Yeah, sell them. I assume you're talking about the promos or the foils or whatever they are. So just sell It doesn't them. matter what they are. Sell them. Next yeah. question. Yeah. So uh, well, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I will. <laughs> I don't want to completely ignore the previous question about Modern. So I'm not going to go in depth. But I will say this. I think that Modern... If you look at the last couple GPs, it's a lot of linear decks, whether it's aggro or combo or what have you. You know, it's Dredge, it's KCI. Um, there'll be a white-blue control deck. Maybe there'll be a Spirits deck. Maybe there'll be a Humans deck. Those are basically the only fair parts of the format, and everything else is just degenerate combo. And the combos are so degenerate, than far more than they used to be. You know, it's not a turn four format. That's just, it's almost like now the question is whether or not it's a turn two format as opposed to a turn three format. So I think that changes are coming to modern. I don't know what they're going to be. I do think they're going to be centered. They're, the time for them to come is probably around a pro tour. You know, the last time they banned modern cards before pro tour, Aaron Force, I said, you know, we didn't ban cards to shake up the format for the pro tour, but we decided that if we're going to ban cards or unban cards, the time to make those decisions that we were always going to make is to time it for a pro tour so that it's a, you know, so that's when it is. So, you know, if I were looking at the format. If anybody's got to scramble and innovate, it should be the best players in the game. Right. Yeah. And if I, I if I look at modern, I think the cleanest way to shake up the format is to ban Ancient Surins and Faithless Looting. Because all of the broken decks or in even Tron. Now, in Tron's not a broken deck in this in the new world of modern, but you take out just half of the the stupid stuff with ancient surins and take out the other half with faithless looting. And then if we live in a world where humans or bant spirits is too good, sure, I think we can probably figure that out from there, right? Vile or yeah, I yeah. mean whatever, right? We can figure out what needs to be done at that point, but you know, those decks have exploitable weaknesses, but the problem with modern right now is you basically have to play, if you're going to play a fair deck, you have to play spirits because they play an instant speed and have counter magic, or you have to play humans because they just have so much disruption. You just can't do any of the fun, weird stuff anymore because you'll just get killed on turn two by KCI. And maybe you load your sideboard up with KCI hate. Well, then you're going to get killed on turn two by dredge. You're going to get killed on turn two by what you know some other stupid deck or you're gonna get troned out of the game right there's just Your so 90 many seconds are up yeah there's just so many stupid cards i think faithless Looting and ancient Surins are what i would do to shake up the format in a way that doesn't just blow everything up by hitting 10 cards i was All close to right. 90 seconds next we're pulling one's pants down by banning a super expensive card they paid a lot of money that's for. true too this next email is uh very time appropriate with an ultimate masters reprint it's titled life from Maloma foils okay hey guys i asked this on twitter during the spike of life from most monday i saw an opportunity for arbitrage and some foil modern masters loam at 50 dollars each card kingdom bios for 68 credit i didn't end up doing it after the twitter discussion with you guys i think it may be a good talking point for the cast 
to go over why. It might not be a good idea, or why it might have been a complete miss. Thanks for the help and advice. You guys have made Magic free to play with me for a little bit of elbow grease. Uh, it got reprinted. Next question. Well, we were he's talking about what, arbitrage at the time, in the moment. why did you talk him out of it? Yeah, he's talking about uh, arbitrage it, in the moment. Because we knew it could have gotten reprinted, and there was just a, like... You should never like just buy into something because it spiked immediately, even if you see a short term opportunity, because it's going to take a while for the card to get to the mail right. yep. and to you. And then it's going to take a while for you to send that BIOS in and things can change in that time. So. Yeah, that's that's the big thing. It's you either have to play this little shell game where you're submitting a buy list order before you have the cards in hand before the cards come right. in the mail or yeah. you have to wait, in which case you're, you know, you're waiting, you know, you might get hosed. So. I, I agree. You know, arbitrage is certainly something you should keep your eye out for. You just have to understand the risks involved with it. And Card Kingdom is not going to screw you the way some people will. I've had, I've had a reprint uh, hose me like during the one month uh, a buy list. I won't say who was processing stuff. I sent them stuff. It was taking them forever to pay me. I kept inquiring, and then they're like, "Oh, our offer is significantly lower because this card was reprinted," and they. You know, and that was not even like me banking on a reprint and quickly sending it in. That was just them not having their shit together. So after experiences like that, you're talking, you know, something that could happen real quick. I just would that vendor rhyme with arms uh, are sexy, but at the same time, what was that? Would that vendor <laughs> have people heard of this? Have been vendor? a color and an animal. Ah, I, don't know. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, um, that's my. Oh, that's a throwback, Jason. Yeah. You were you were on that trip with me when that happened. Yeah, when they man, that sent was, me that email. Uh, that was a store. Yeah. that was a store. Yep. So uh, stuff like that can happen. It made me real kind of. But Card Kingdom's not going to pull that crap. But at the same time, you got a real limited window. I don't like doing risky stuff like that, which is why I'm into EDH because you can see changes coming a month in advance, and uh, you know, this whole like, oh, I'm going to buy cards on the Friday of the Pro Tour, you know, and hope I get them kind of speculation is not for me anymore. I'm not as spry as I used to be. So <laughs> our short term arbitrage windows don't really appeal to me anymore. If that's something that would have appealed to you, fine. But like, look, it's, what just, just, it's just risky. It's well, got the reprint. It's just risky. Yeah. You, you'd be well, if you're fine with the risk, you want to do it, you can make some money, but it's just a question of risk management, risk tolerance. You know what is not a question of risk management Cards the three of us think are going to go up uh, <laughs> in the shorter long term. Why don't we transition to pick of the Let's week? Let's do it. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Time for the pick of the week. I will go first because I have one that is predicated on Simic. I'm hoping, like, basically there were no good commanders in, uh, in Guilds of Ravnica. Like, no one's building any of it. If you go on EDH rec, people are building Niv-Mizzet the most. And Niv-Mizzet's not even a new commander. It doesn't have new abilities. <laughs> That's right? true. So, like, so no really one gives does. a shit about Guilds of Ravnica. I think there will be a good Simic commander because they don't understand how to make Simic cards. They're either garbage or too good. I'm thinking with two, maybe three legendary creatures and, like, you know, some stuff, I think they're going to screw up. I think there's going to be a lot of garbage Simic cards, and I think there will be one card that's maybe too good. I'm liking Hardened Scales at four. Hardened Scales goes out of play set at a time for that modern deck. You know, it's played in other formats, but I kind of think, uh, even with the recent Commander reprinting that's not really all that recent anymore, um, I'm thinking Hardened Scales well, just goes out. Uh, you here. like it even post... Cause because it spiked with that modern deck and it's kind of tailing off now, but you it think is, it's going to spike it's, it's again? It's tailing off. It's but I, I think it'll, it'll it's tailing off now just because it's, like the it's it's cooling off. But I I think uh, Simic coming around is going to be one one counter based. It's in a crosshairs for Ancient Stirring getting hit in modern. But that doesn't really that doesn't. I mean that could I mean, be yeah, sure, that could like, be that could be six months from now. That could be nine months from now. It could be never. You know. I mean, so that's part of that's it. The part modern of what you stuff is new. This was a this was a, an eight dollar card based solely off EDH before. So, like, I think it can get up again. What card? I really do. I don't. Hardened scales Arden topped scales. out. Hardened scales is topped out at five dollars. Yeah, that card was never eight dollars. Yeah, it was. What am I thinking? I don't know. Whatever. It's 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 the lowest it's been since it hit in modern. That's, it's cooling that's off. Correct. I think it goes back up on the the basis right. of. Civic doing uh, stuff I'll add that uh, if Jason's right, you can see this stuff coming a month off. If you are thinking about this, I mean, I would suggest holding off for 
like the thing is they could spoil that commander that would cause hardened scales to go up and you could still buy them then so i i you know I guess, but what stuff. do I do for a pick of the week now? I don't give a shit about anything right now. <laughs> EDH is not doing anything. Gills of Ravnica give us nothing. Nip Mizzet is cool, man. It's it's you're right. It's not like it's the, it doesn't have any new abilities except for the can't be countered clause though, and that is relevant. Well, the cool new ability is how dumb it is in standard. Apparently, it is pretty sweet in standard. Yeah, it's a great. It's just a mirror. Bra- it's a control breaker. You play it on I've turn seven been- with dive down up. I've just been at a loss for like two months for stuff that happening because nothing happened as a result of Guild of Ravnica. Yeah. All right. I've got one. So like, I'm just like, uh, I'm I'm sure hardened skills goes up, but Corbin's (laughs) right. Like if they don't spoil anything, it it doesn't move all that much. You just wait on it. It doesn't mean it's a bad pick. It just means maybe it's, you know, you know, you bring people's attention to it, but give it a little bit of time. Before but there's, the, I don't want to pick a standard based pick because like I don't care about that. Yeah, yeah, like that's yeah. not my. All right, whatever, I, man. I've got put nothing on the spreadsheet. Put me giving a middle finger. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what you want to put on the spreadsheet, but I've got a an old favorite here, um, but one I like. Baneslayer Angel at ten dollars. Baneslayer Angel. Why is it ten dollars? Uh, well, it's it's Baneslayer Angel for one. People still they still look at Lyra and call it Baneslayer Angel, right? So it, it's just an iconic card, but also. This is a potent finisher, and it sounds so weird to say. This is a, an extremely powerful finisher in the sideboard of the blue-white decks in Modern. I, the number of times I've just watched people slam a Baneslayer Angel in Modern and their opponent did not expect it is unreal. It just turns out flying first strike lifelink, five fives for five, still pretty good, especially on the turn after you cryptic command somebody. So... uh yeah, I like it at ten dollars. It's been climbing up a little bit from nine to that, but the last reprint it got reprinted in M ten and M eleven, but then FTV Angels and that kind of nuked it for a while. But uh, it's starting to come back a little bit. So you know, I don't think it's going to go crazy or anything. But you know, it could also be a thing where if Modern gets shaken up at some point over the next year or six months or whatever, and or just Blue White continues to do well because with Teferi and Jace, Blue White has become the best fair deck outside of. I mean, maybe, depending on how you want to class, it's certainly the best control deck, right? Um, no deck with Teferi in it is a fair deck. <laughs> that's, I mean, fair enough, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Bainsider Angel at 10, like, it just has some breakout potential on top of enough factors that keep it slowly rising, I think. DJ, what do you got? Uh, my recording's at an hour and three minutes, so I'm going to say that... Sca- oh my god, we did 47 minutes last hey, week. Hang on, hang on. I'm just going to say Scavenger Grounds is a dollar. That should be enough information. <laughs> I the played card- that in a commander deck. It's pretty fun. Yeah. I mean, I, that was something that the everyone on EDA Trek was like all over that card, and I kind of mentioned on the podcast, and you guys were like, that'll never be money. So. Well, it's, yeah, it's pretty cheap right now. Well, the reason it wasn't going like it wasn't a great pick when it was in standard yeah, or two dollars yeah i agree yeah it and actually now was it's a four great bucks pick at some point right because it was good in standard right. and then yeah. like and now, now it's a dollar out of standard and it's a dollar and now it's a good pickup i agree all right there you go guys anything else you want to touch well i picked them up in at two dollars for trading a bunch of standard cards that are worth nothing now so i still well, win. it certainly looks cool, good man. if that's what you were doing uh anything else you guys want to hit on before we get out of here this week do one FTV email. Oh my gosh! All right, on the spot, I thought, well, I'm yeah, going to pull it up. You're not here. ready for that because I thought I thought DJ that said we had understood. infinite emails, so I, I didn't I didn't think I didn't pull one up. But you know what? I got this man. Oh, you got to go get another computer. He has to get another no, 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 computer. We're good. I, got it. Hack I got it. He's got a hack. All right, into the he's got it. Frame. Let's do it. We, we doing this? Should I do the song? Uh, I'll find one. Yeah, do the All song. Right. I will do the song while you look from the vault. From the vault. If we didn't read your email, it's Corbin's fault. All right, here we go. I haven't even read this. Oh, no, wait, there's a second verse. Did you not know the song had a second verse? I'd love verse? to hear the second verse. Wait. From the vault. From the vault. If we didn't read your email, don't blame Jason Holt. Neat. That's we a good changed song. one line. It's more like. A, That's how songs work. It's more what? like a bridge what? than a second verse. Your face is a bridge. Okay. <laughs> Corbin is a stupid fucking idiot. This is the segment all about how Corbin didn't read your emails and he got blown out. So if you transcribe to set review, too fucking bad for you. 
Alright, onward. From the vault, from the vault. <laughs> if we didn't read your email, don't blame Jason all. The shingles on the roof. Alright guys, I'm gonna... This is... This is from Ryan Tucker. I have not even read this email. It was sent to us. Oh, yeah, on, it was sent to yeah, us in of course you haven't read the June of 2014. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. Hi guys. During your discussion while answering a question for someone who wanted to trade legacy staples into modern cards for a deck you wanted to play, I thought of another question and wanted to hear your take on it. Do you consider prizes a valid reason and more of an incentive to trade into something playable? In the past, I've given up small amounts of value, like trading a temple We've, for a rotating card I needed. Email. Do what? I'm pretty sure we've done this email. I mean, we've certainly answered this question before. I don't have it flagged as having been read. I'm 90% sure we've read this email as a from the vault email. Okay, I'll flag it. You might be right. Wow, it's almost like you're not organized. Uh, yeah, it's almost like I wasn't ready. All right, I got another one queued up. This one's from Sean oh. Owensby. Oh, I was wondering how this could be my fault. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right, Sean. Uh, same thing said to us in, in 2014. Uh, I have a couple HP underground sleeves that are sleeve, sleeve playable that I'm looking to get rid of. Sell them to me in 2014, please. What is the best way to turn these into other capital? In a recent SCG open, they were offering 130 cash on them. Oh, you take the 130 but cash. Snap even, even the seller said he didn't advise selling these to us at the price he was giving. <laughs> what is the best way to break down something such as this, given the two different scenarios? Scenario one... I want cash. Scenario two, I want cards that are hard to find that people will be willing to trade appropriately or give me uh, or be willing to trade for an expensive card. Well, there's this great Ponzi scheme called Puka Trade that you should really get into. <laughs> I really hope this dude didn't get an answer. So he's like, I'm going to hold these underground seeds till they read my email. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ryan or Sean, Sean Owensby, if you're listening, I hope you kept them. No, I mean, the answer, though, is if you I want you cash, during Vegas. if you want cash, you sell them individually. You can sell dual lands individually all the time to other players because people want them and they just want playable ones. And you can discount them in how almost however you see fit. And you are eventually going to sell those duels because people want dual lands. Um, yeah, they do. I would not recommend yeah, selling do. them to a dealer on something that that expensive and that desirable just put a little extra work in presumably you don't have 20 of them to sell you have a couple just just find somebody who wants to get into legacy and does not want to spend a lot of money to do it that's how you should do it if you want to trade them same thing except you can probably even get higher value if you took 130 cash yeah (laughs) yeah absolutely that's that's rough (laughs) there you go ftv email down all right, everybody. There you go. That's Brainstorm Brewery this week. Next week, we should have the, I think anyways, the full spoiler for you and May. Maybe maybe there'll be another week of them. We can talk a little bit about that. If not, uh, it'll be Thanksgiving, so you know. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week on Brainstorm Brewery. Check out the YouTube channel. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah, go to uh, YouTube.com slash Brainstorm Brewery and uh, like and subscribe. You know, finger blast that bell icon to get a notification whenever we do a new episode of the podcast or a new brain bites, which is a thing we like to do, which is like a, uh, you know, just a, it's, it's a non podcast topic that we spend about 10 minutes on teaching you some stuff for MTG finance. It's super worthwhile. And, uh, you know, if you want a $0 way to support this podcast, giving us a like and a subscribe on YouTube is huge for us. We really could use it. And it costs you no money. Thanks so again. Pat- consider that. Thanks again to the patrons. This is Thank Your Patreon Day, or at least it was 37 minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> thanks for letting us be in your ear holes while your racist uncle shouting at your grandma on Thanksgiving. It's great. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Enjoy going home. You're probably listening to this on your way home for Thanksgiving, psyching yourself up to like hear your racist grandfather talk about the caravan. <laughs> so, like... We're sorry that's a thing, but enjoy. Or maybe you're super racist and you don't want to like top to your liberal nephew. That could be a thing too. So yeah, if you're super racist, um, just know you're ruining someone else's Thanksgiving, I guess. Anyway, thanks for listening. Unless you're Polish. She. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> All right, I guess I'll stop my recording now.